as a Catholic, of course, I believe that God somehow in some way created everything, the universe that we see here, the multiverse in college. That was when I really studied deeper the Bible and Genesis and trying to really uh, pick it apart, trying to decode it, trying to not decode, but like trying to understand it in a deep way than I ever had before. And I started going through this process of trying to interpret the language of the Bible in modern scientific terminology, you know, trying to take modern scientific concepts that I learned in my biology and chemistry classes and trying to see where that could possibly fit in the first few paragraphs of Genesis, you know, the creation of the world. Because, you know, the beautiful thing about the Bible and to many people's detriment, it can be interpreted in so many different ways. We've had these conversations before, you know, and how maybe the creation story in itself is just a representation of what people could understand at that time, yeah. what creation was. Supposedly, you know, the Bible has had, uh, you know, revelations of, you know, different things that are happening today, right? Some people have said that there's mentions of, you know, big birds flying in the sky, which could maybe be translated to airplanes. But back then, they just didn't know the concept of an airplane, or didn't That's, know various scientific concepts that now, and they after research, we kind of put a term to it. But people back then, they, they could only explain it in the way that they could with what they knew the words that they used back then are different than the words we have now there's words now that didn't even exist back then especially even in that language there's science there's something science didn't exist until a certain period of time with the positive positivism movement and then it moved to a less strict post-positivism movement where it went more into subjective qualitative research but all these scientific terms that we've come to create they've only just existed within the past few you know thousands of years that we've we've lived and so of course the language of the bible isn't going to include scientific terminology you couldn't expect it to because those words did not exist the bible kind of mentions that you know god created adam from from the soil from the sand right and then i was telling you like what what, if you think about it like you know i know yeah exactly you know yeah the, the the sand could just be a representation of the smallest particle that people could perceive with their eyes, but maybe what they were really trying to say is that God made us from the same substance as the earth, which is particles. Which everything around us is made of what you're saying, atoms, and then particles make up atoms, you know. Like dirt itself gives life to to plants, which in in turn gives life to animals. it's, It's almost like, you know, soil back then was the provider of life. Where do we get this information from? We get it from the Bible. Where's the information from the Bible? And, and, and of course, as me and you as Catholics, we believe it comes from God. But like deeper than that, where does it come from? You know, if we believe that the information comes from a deity, from God, from this being, as far as I understand it, the Bible started out with word of mouth and then it evolved into written language and now it's become translated into the Bible we have today. Was this information revealed through, was it revealed through visions? Was it revealed through dreams? We could even think of like Adam and Eve lived, right? And, and they spoke English, a language because God created in that way, as it says in the Bible, and they spoke words. Um, and so the, the story of Adam and Eve would be carried on by their children that they had. And then their children's children would carry on that story. And that would be that word of mouth that keep continuing amongst the generations of generations until it finally gets written down. If that's the case, then Adam and Eve's children and Adam and Eve themselves were the eyewitness testimony. I first, you know, eyewitnesses of God creating the earth and them. I could see how someone would come in there and say during this word of mouth, or you just say it was all made up or, or say, oh, it just got exaggerated along the, along the way by the first beings that existed on earth. It talks about, the world being created in seven days, right? But what does seven days mean in God's time? Seven million years, seven billion years. When you drop a something in water and it creates those waves, right, the change expanding. Right. You know, like the Big Bang might have been words coming out of God's mouth into existence. Words, sound, wavelengths of sound themselves are vibrations. You know. And we were talking about how maybe God's voice, a specific vibration of the universe was enough. 
like if you want to dive into string theory, I think that's what we're talking about. Like string theory says there's these tiny vibrating strings that make up the atoms that make up everything. So yeah. like what if certain vibrations vibrate those strings in a certain way to produce certain particles, which produce certain atoms, which produce certain forms and things we see around us. And what if God's voice is that vibration that vibrates those strings, the theoretical yeah. strings of string theory that, you know, then create the different types of particles, which create the different types of atoms. Because vibrations do affect reality. We couldn't hear each yeah. other without vibration. If somebody can organize vibration, you know, and use it to, to their advantage, then they can actually create. They can create things, you know? Like, maybe even, I'm wondering if maybe if you change the vibration of something, it can become, you know, turn water into wine. If that would just be a matter of changing the number of... Um was it protons and electrons or something like that? Because, you know, the periodic table of elements is just mm. literally the difference between two atoms could be one or less electrons and protons and such like that so that make up the atom. Like that's, you change one and it completely changes the element. It's, it's mind blowing. You know, there's this actual science that scientists that have studied water, they measure, they, they went to look at in a microscope, the molecules of the water. So the molecules in the water that had negative energy and bad words thrown at it you know it was just regular and disorganized just water itself but the other water that you know had positive emotions good words actually had some geographic figures like almost as crystals right it, it informed geometric features yeah. exerting emotion exerting words had such a big impact on how the molecules had formed yeah and the reason right? why because it goes right back to god's word you know like words the thing is it's debatable because it's is that just a metaphor god speaking and then this happening like what do we really mean do we mean he's literally saying or is he using vibrations or is it just to break down the complexity of what's really happening what god's really doing because our human minds are incapable of under even comprehending what creation would even look like or be like, like